Now listen to this point. Zeal, when used in wisdom, the word zeal, Z-E-A-L, zeal, when used in wisdom, is one of the greatest tools Jesus has given you. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. I want to read something to you. Isaiah chapter 59, that's in the Old Testament too. Hallelujah. I can make you laugh and roll out. I can tell you a lot of funny things, but I want to leave you with this, brother. Ain't nobody going to stop you people if you'll believe God's word. Ain't nobody going to do it. None. None whatsoever. Jesus' word said it. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17. Listen to the point. Zeal, when used in wisdom, you got to have wisdom in zeal, is one of the greatest tools Jesus has given you. Isaiah 59, verse 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance. I'm going to explain that in just a minute. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with the zeal as a cloak. Jesus set his face like a flint to Jerusalem. The Bible said he put on the garments of vengeance. You know what Jesus' vengeance was? L O V E. E. He loved everybody that hate him. So my God, if a man cussed me out, why should I get mad at him? But he cussed you in the church. So what? Hallelujah. I just smiled at him. Told him the Lord love him. Y'all don't know what he just cussed me. And I said, what's your name? I said, the Lord love you. Blowed him away. He looked at me. I just cussed this man on. He told me God loved me. Jesus put on the coats of vengeance. You know what he did? He loved people. People that hurt him. People that spit upon him, he loved them. He looked at a harlot, man, prostitute, biggest hooker in town. And he delivers her from seven devils. Then he says, take up your cross and follow me. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. He wasn't always pointing his finger. He said, he that hath no sin, let him cast the first stone. Oh, Lord. He had a zeal about him. Don't go to Jerusalem. He said, for this cause I came into the world. For this cause I set myself, set my face toward Jerusalem. Yes. See, zeal when used in wisdom is the greatest tool Jesus gave you. There's a lot of people got zeal, but they don't have no wisdom, so they don't know how to use it. They walk out to people and say, you need to get saved, you honky devil. Why don't you get saved, you dirty dog? Oh, bless God. You need to be assembly of God. You're not assembly of God? Where are you, Catholic? Oh, you a heathen dog. You Baptist? You Baptist don't believe in nothing. What's wrong with you, Baptist? Methodist? My God, y'all done died. You don't even know about it yet. I mean, I mean a lot of good spirit-filled people are cut your guts out thinking they're doing a service for the Lord. Walk up to you and say, why don't you leave your old honky husband? Why? Well, he's been treating you so bad. And she's been saved 37 years. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. They got a lot of zeal. Come on, man. Come where we are. But they have no wisdom in how to use it. So listen to the point. Zeal, when used in wisdom, is one of the greatest tools Jesus has given you. man walked up to me not long ago. Boy, he went. <laughs> blew smoke in my face. He said, say, preacher. You think smoking to send me to hell? I said, no, you just smell like you've been there. <laughs> oh, that's God. <laughs> I said, but I'll tell you what he will do for you. He said, watch that. I said, it will cause me a trip to the hospital. What do you mean by that? I said, to pray for you to get cancer out your guts. But enjoy yourself because the big C is coming. It's kind of hard to smoke. No one cancer's coming. I said, don't you enjoy it? Enjoy it some more. Take another big drag. In fact, let it come out your mouth slowly and suck it up your nose again. You know how they do that. They make it a round circle. You ever seen them do that? Or maybe they play games. Little smoke holes around it. Big deal. <laughs> it's all right. Because one day, Brother Jesse, I got an uncle who's dying with cancer. Could you go pray for him? Oh, I wish I'd quit. I wish I'd quit. Yeah, it'll kill you. You don't even need God to tell you that. Just read the pack. Just read the pack. So do you believe it'll send you to hell? No, but it'll kill you. I've been smoking for 40 years. It ain't killed me yet. Hang on, you ain't dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh, Paul? Am I preaching, brother? Am I shucking the corn? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise, <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Think about it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody going to stop me now. 
No, I've got a lot of friends of mine say, Brother, Brother Jesse. I mean, they're down there, they walk, just say, Brother Jesse, how you doing, brother? Get down, all right. Listen, can we be saved full of the Holy Ghost and snort a little Coke? I said, Coca-Cola? Oh, no, 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 no. Cocaine. <laughs> yeah, cocaine. I said, uh, this, I don't believe the Lord, but mine is getting high. I said, you want to get high? You got some stuff? Oh, yeah. What you got? I said, I grabbed him by the ears. In the name of Jesus, boy. They said, he got it. He got it. He got it. <laughs> oh, no, cocaine. Oh, it'll make you get high, but it'll eat your guts out of your nose. It'll take all your money from your family and kill you. But you cool, daddy. Ain't nobody going to stop you. But one day, you're going to snort a little bit too much. And you're going to get this, which, 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 which. OD, you know what I'm saying? Over and out. And you're going to get to heaven with cocaine in your nose. And the Lord's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. <sighs> ho, 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 ho. See, zeal when used in wisdom is one of the greatest tools Jesus has given you. I'll never forget I had a good friend of mine. I wasn't saved, Brother Gerald. He got saved. I'll tell you how he got saved. I witnessed to him and I wasn't saved. Ain't nobody, God used the heathen devil like me to witness to that boy and he got saved. Became a preacher, Baptist preacher. He's a good friend of mine, went to school. His name's Skippy. I said, Skippy, you know what's wrong with you? He said, what? I said, you're a heathen. He said, I am a heathen. I said, you bad, Skippy. I said, the problem is, he said, well, you dirty, low down, you worse than me. I said, yeah, but yes, Skippy, I know it and you don't. I said, you worse off than me. You think you're good. You're a heathen dog. I said, you're going to hell. He said, no, I ain't. I said, he said, you're going to hell. I said, I know I'm going to hell, but you don't know you're going to hell. If something happened to you, it'll be surprise, surprise, surprise. He got saved two weeks later. Became a Baptist preacher. Powerful man of God. I had me and me and my friend, we were playing music in Dallas. You know, we had long hair, it was freaky, man, you know. In those days, women would cut their hair in a shag. I mean, how many of you remember, ladies remember the shag haircut? Well, I had mine in the shag. All the bald-headed men hated me. I had it down to here. <laughs> Sometimes I'd shake it in front of them. <laughs> Praise God. I ought to cut that hair. You know, I said, you ought to grow some. <laughs> you know, things like that. Make them mad. He walked up to me. He had a lot of zeal. He said, remember when you witnessed to me you getting saved? I said, uh, yeah, yeah. How you doing, Skippy? You don't want to hell. I said, Skippy, you don't need to tell me that already. No. He didn't show me no love. See, he didn't have no wisdom in his zeal. He put on the cloak of vengeance. He cut our guts out, me and Gary. Y'all a bunch of dogs. Yeah, I ain't worried about nothing. I looked at him. I said, I'm going to tell you something, fool. Of course, I said some other words. I said, I'm not a preacher, but I got enough sense to know to witness the people with love. Cut his legs out. I said, you know what your problem is? You got a lot of zeal, but you don't have no sense. I said, and if I listen to you telling me about God, chances are I'm going to bust hell wide open. You done told me how low of a word that dog I am, how much of a heathen demon I am, when you should have told me about the love of Jesus so I could come to the knowledge of Christ. Did they teach you that in the seminary or did you go to the cemetery to get your degree? <laughs> I walked off. <laughs> I walked off. I was mad. He couldn't say nothing. That man apologized to me every year for five solid years. Then I got saved. He said, I'm so glad you got saved. Then I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he told me, I can't fellowship with you. <laughs> I said, Skip, do you believe I'm going to heaven? Yes! I said, what you going to do when I get there? If you can't fellowship with me here, how are you going to fellowship me, with me over there? Well, you believe in tongues. It's of the devil. It's of the devil, Jesse. It's of the devil. I said, how do you know? He said, the Catholics got it. And if the Catholics got it, it's of the devil. <laughs> That's what he told me. I'll never forget that. I said, well, good Lord, look like the cat that got more than you. It's called L-O-V-E. I'm saved now. I said, skip it, ain't nobody going to stop me. I said, if you want to sit there and let the devil kill you with sickness and disease and poverty, go ahead. I said, but I found out that God's no respected person. So if he give it to the apostle Peter, he got to give it to me. It's mine. I'm a son of the living God. I don't believe that. I said, well, that's your business. But I love you. Anyway. Isn't that amazing? See, his zeal was good, but he didn't have no wisdom in it. You see, 
listen to this point. Your greatest desire must be to do and complete. Listen to this. Your greatest desire must be to do and complete the work of God that he's called you to no matter what. In other words, God says you must reach your goal. St. John chapter 4 verse 34. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He said, Jesse Duplantis, I am the author and finisher of your faith. You understand? He said, now, there's the goal. You reach it. You attain it. It's yours. God, you're going to help me? I've done, done that. You walk in my footsteps. Look what Jesus said. You want to turn to it? You can. St. John 4, verse 34. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. The point is your greatest desire must be to do and complete the work God has called you to do. Or in other words, reach your goal. The Bible said if God, what did he say? Boys, if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. I'm going to say something that will make somebody mad. The theological world will not throw, will not overthrow the gifts of the Spirit. They've been trying to do it for centuries. They said it died when the Apostle John died, but it showed up again. <laughs> you can do what you want, and you can believe what you want, and you can go what you want, but I won't let you know something. The fullness of the Spirit, there'll be no theological denomination will overthrow the gift of the Spirit or the power of the Word of God. And you may not believe in healing, but God's going to heal them anyway. You may not believe in salvation, but God's going to save them anyway. It don't make no difference. God said, I'm coming for a church without spot or wrinkle, brother. It'll not have a blemish on it. And, brother, there'll be the fullness because you are complete in him, and he is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. You may be here tonight. You may not believe in the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. It don't make no difference. It's still true. You may not like the way I'm baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You may not say that's not good enough. You only should be baptized in Jesus' name. Well, if you believe the red parts of the Bible, bless God, the red parts is what Jesus said. You go read the last line of the last chapter of the last verse of the book of Matthew and he said, you go in the world and you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And if you're worried about that, you say and in Jesus' name, just in case so your Acts 2.38 will work for you. Yeah. Alright? Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. You can have your doctrine. You can take any doctrine you want and do what you want with it. But I want to tell you something. You cannot cut out the Holy Ghost because he's going to show up somewhere. And the reason why God gave the Holy Ghost to the Catholics because the Baptists wouldn't go down there and preach to them Catholics. They was always asking them to get out of the church. The Assemblies of God wouldn't go down to the Catholics and ask them and preach to them. They thought there was a bunch of heathen dogs. But Jesus said they're worthy to receive the Spirit of God because they've got a lot of great, good Catholic people that know Jesus in their heart. They may not understand the same semantics as you understand. Understand, but brother, one thing I like about Catholics, they go to church on Christmas and Protestants cancel the church services on Christmas. My God, they can't be that bad. Isn't that amazing? Now I want to let you know something. There'll be Catholics in heaven, Methodists in heaven, Baptists in heaven, Assembly of God in heaven, Episcopalian in heaven, Presbyterian. Jesus said, I'm going to judge them according to their heart. They may not dress like you. They may not act like you. But maybe that's all they know is the knowledge of what they had. And the reason why they don't understand a lot of things, because we wouldn't go down there and witness to them. We preached against them instead of preached toward them. Thank you, Pa. I appreciate that. Ain't nobody going to stop us now. Mm -mm. I get an opportunity to go preach. I go preach in the Catholic church. I wasn't I was just more than, no more than just a few weeks ago. I was in there, <laughs> went to pray for this lady. She says, you're not a priest. You can't pray for me. I said, what do you want me to do? Go, go outside and change my shirt around? You know, get me a good collar going? Just turn my coat around. Let's God look just like one. The priest said, hey, Jesse, how you doing? She said, oh, Father, do you know him? I said, yeah. She said, oh, you can pray for me. Father said, it's okay. I said, what do you think about it? Jer. They call he said, the father said it was okay. He said, honey, the father is up there. Isn't that amazing? She said, would you pray one of these beads? I said, I don't know about that, but I've got some good prayers. You want to hear them? I said, can I pray like I want? Well, I want to make sure it's right. I said, I guarantee you, it'll be right. She looked at her priest. He said, 
go here. <laughs> That's how I start praying. He starts speaking in tongues. She said, oh, oh, he one of them charismatics. Oh, God. <laughs> Ain't that a blessing? Hallelujah. Ain't nobody going to stop us. Gamelia said it. He said it 2,000 years ago. If it be of God, you cannot overthrow it lest you find yourself fighting God. Are you fighting God? Is your denomination fighting God? Huh? Let me talk to you AGs. For you Baptists, that means assembly of God. Are you AGs fighting God? Never. Well, why don't you believe his word? I believe his word. You do. Then why are you in the shape you're in? What do you mean? How come you're worried and depressed all the time when the Bible said, cast all your care upon him? For he careth for you. Hey, listen, I'm leaving town tonight. <laughs> I would just, I want to ask you that. I'm going to ask myself that. I made some mistakes, Gerald. You know why I made them? Because I walked in the flesh instead of walking in the spirit. God told me to do something, I wouldn't do it. So I suffered the consequences of it. Hmm? Then God said, love you, husband, ladies. But he's changed so much. You ever look at yourself in the mirror? You ain't exactly no hot rock yourself. Everything's falling too. Just thought I'd tell you that. But he ain't like he was when I married him. Do you ever think he may think the same thing? Do you know how high he's got to go through the bathroom and knock the stockings out the way? Got them little eggs rolling all over his house. Do you realize that he got to put up with you as much as you got to put up with him? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you better watch it, Papa. You may not live as long as you think you're going to live. <laughs> you ever thought about that? I know it's irritating when you're trying to cook and that big lazy honky is laying on the sofa and he screams at you, Come here quickly! You run, drop pots. What's the matter? Change the channel. <laughs> and you want to kill him. I can understand that. And he'll wake you up and ask you a stupid question. Are you asleep? <laughs> But ladies, have you ever thought when you, he walks in, he's been working for 60 hours. He cash his check. He come home and you go. And you take it all and give him his quarter a week. <laughs> huh? You ever thought about that? I mean, no, no, I know it's on both sides. <laughs> yeah. You ever thought about that? Hmm? You will. I had a couple come in my office one time. We have been married 37 years, Brother Duplantis, and we have never had an argument. I said, you're the biggest liar I've ever met in my life, woman. She said, that's the truth. <laughs> my God, you live with somebody for 37 years, you're going to say something wrong. Ain't nobody going to stop us now. You ever thought about marriage is compromise? You know, Jesus compromises with us all the time. Thank God he does. Most of us wouldn't make it to heaven. And we got the gall and audacity to blame God on some things. I have blamed my wife for the things that I did. Why not? <laughs> and she's blamed me for the things that she did. Sarah blamed Abraham for her not having babies. Wasn't his fault. So she gave him to her maid. And of course, you know, nice as Abraham, he said, I'm going to do this for you, Sarah. He's a nice old boy, you know what I'm saying? I mean, my God. So she has a child, and then she got the gall and audacity to get mad at him. She's the one who caused it. <laughs> Abraham said, listen here, God, wasn't my fault, it's all Sarah. I never once thought about it, that lying dog. It's truth. They had a bad marriage, people. When you give your husband to another woman, that's a bad marriage. One woman, I said that one time, one woman said, I would love to give him away, but he always comes back. 
Ain't nobody going to stop us now. If it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. I want a man that's tough. Why? Somebody to take care of me. So I can sleep till 11 o'clock. But you got the gall and audacity to elbow him in the, in the side and say, Get up and go to work. <laughs> so what you going to do? Beauty sleep. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and vice versa. Let me say this in close. I've been married for 13 years to the same woman. Ain't that a miracle? <laughs> well, today it is. How long have you been married? <laughs> anyway, praise God. <laughs> I can tell that Shirley and Gerald love each other by the scars they bear. <laughs> no, praise God. <laughs> I love it because they don't mix no men's. They don't care who's there. If they want to chew each other out, they do it. And that's love. Surely. Even the poor dog gets in the corner. <laughs> Gerald. And I look at that. That's a blessing. It really is. Because there's love there. Gerald says, I'll tell you what. She's politicking. She ain't been here all day. And he smiled. And I noticed Shirley came in and she said, <laughs> she's smiling too, praise God. But if they didn't love each other, they wouldn't be together. Just that simple. Papa, why don't you sit with your wife? <laughs> he, he says, I've been asked the same thing by the kids. You notice that his son does the same thing? <laughs> Ain't nobody going to stop us now. Runs in the family. Look at Tommy. He said by his wife. He said, you better know it. She makes money. I'm staying with her. <laughs> no, <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that Jesus? You know, it's good to laugh in church. Just thought I'd tell you. Some people think, you shouldn't laugh. Why not? It's a good place to laugh. God says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Isn't it nice to laugh? Sure it is. Sir, I understand that, Papa. He says, not because we don't love each other. How many people believe? How many people? <laughs> okay, I understand that. Praise God. <laughs> Hello. He want, him, he, want, he want me to make sure I praise God. <laughs> I know that, Papa. I'm just joking with you. Hallelujah. Gamelia says, boys, we better leave these men alone. If it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Because I don't want to find myself fight, fighting God. Ain't nobody going to stop me now. Nobody going to stop Jesse the Planners. I'm going to finish my ministry because Jesus said I was. Ain't nobody going to start stop Swartz Assembly of God. God ordained his church to be. It'll be. There ain't nobody going to stop you. The only way you can be stopped is if you listen to Satan and let him do it to you. Everybody bow your heads. Jesus is here. Thanks for listening to this powerful message by Jesse Duplantis. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and the notification bell in order to be up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. For more information, visit our website at jdm.org. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.